All right, let me get Ian in here. Ian's got a fun question I look forward to answering. Dungeon Master Hotline. How can I assist you? I have a question about how do you deal with roguish, morally questionable acts from my players? Roguish, morally questionable acts. Actions have Example. consequences. Perfect. And how do you go about that without being combative or kind of pushing the thing towards certain ways? All right. So we, we talked about this before, but if you want to give us an example of what you're dealing with. Yes, absolutely. So without any spoilers to anything specifically, there was a tragic event and people around different towns were misplaced and we ended up having a player decide that him and a group of little NBC like lackeys that he has uh, decided that the best option was to go ransack uh, towns and such. In the process, um, there was a few completely non-combatant or just innocent individuals that uh, were just getting things and are in the town that they were ransacking. And that player then proceeded to thinking his only other option was to get rid of them um, because he already knew that, you know, being found ransacking would be bad. Uh, he then decided to... Uh, kill the individuals. That would be right. the most recent example I have. Killing innocent people. Uh, and something something that we the that we also talked about was like people pickpocketing and you know stealing from commoners and stuff and just and just in general how to deal with with uh, that yeah. how to deal that, with that and then just combative like stuff like that where they seem to be the mischievous nature of it and less like the little instances all the way up to the killing like let's say you've got a paladin that deems a shop owner that he's charging too much and then decides to kill them because of it right so the very first question is how does the rest of the party feel about it I'm going to start with out of character. How does the how do the other players, not their characters, their the players feel about it? How the individual players react to when this is going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can see that there's definitely some of them may be all more so on the I'll use good versus the other ones that seem to be more of the chaotic kind of doing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But it's definitely a little divisive. But <laughs> It seems that some think that, oh, this is the only way to get the best loot in d, &D and others that want to play it like, you know, maybe they're trying to not just kill Townsfolk. All right. And then in character, um, I would imagine there is some there's some conflict as well. Yeah. So uh, in the most recent example I gave, it happened to be a very limited session. So there wasn't as many, but there wasn't like a paladin in the party or a cleric that would say, no, don't do that kind of thing. And because of that, they felt like they could get away. You know, the paladins always deemed as the party pooper, you know. Uh, so maybe when that's gone, these people think they can just do and run amok. Okay. Um, so there's so the the two different ways to handle it um, start with out of character because that's the least fun. The least fun way to handle it is when or the least fun way is when it's an issue out of character. If the players are doing something that the it doesn't even matter what it is, it could be justified. It could be it could not be. If one player is doing something that the other players don't like out of game, that would be then you have to solve that out of game you don't want to handle out of game problems in game because because that that creates a pretty toxic for, for a number of oh, reasons yeah. for one that creates I a top, agree. toxic environment so that would be a conversation to have with the player and then maybe with the other players and it, it doesn't have to be anything like you don't have to have like an intervention you just be like hey look i'm not looking i'm not i don't want to run that kind of game i don't really like that um mm -hmm. you can also as a dm you can bridge the gap between in and out of in and out of game issues by upping the consequences. So the so the as a DM, you can you can introduce specific consequences to things for behaviors that you 
that you don't want. And you can gauge the amount of I don't want this based off of those consequences. So if somebody pickpockets and you're okay with it, you can give them a reward. What I do is you know, I have a table and if they pickpocket, they can make some gold. If they get caught, they get a fine. So this is a risk reward system. But some people who really don't want that, you're a hero and you should not be pickpocketing. They may like cut off your hand and for the next several sessions or until magic is involved, you're swinging with disadvantage. It's just like this very draconian um, kind of punishment. So you can, you can kind of um, bend the behavior of the players off, you know, tell the players what you're looking for and what you don't want subtly or not so subtly in that way. Now, the most fun way to handle it, to handle the actions have consequences is in game. If it's an issue in game, it can, hmm, So just because actions have consequences doesn't mean that the consequences have to suck or not be fun. And I think uh, I've given this some thought, and I think the best example of this would be the movie Aladdin, which I'm sure all of us have seen. In the movie Aladdin, Aladdin, the every main character, every hero, every every, all the adventurers in that in that movie are going against basically the DM. If you if you want to consider like the government, the DM. They're basically going against the grain in every way. Princess Jasmine is running away because she doesn't, because the law says she has to marry this prince. Aladdin stealing bread. Like everybody's just trying to, everybody's going against the grain and they have a very fun adventure by going against all these things. So I think as a DM, the actions have, have consequences should lead to, or, or as it's a challenge for a DM to create adventures based off of the consequence, the consequences of their actions. Um, just in the movie Aladdin, he steals the bread, has to run from a bunch of guards and eventually runs into Jasmine. And then the main plot opens up and he ends up getting, um, set to be executed, thrown in, you know, Jafar saves him. He meets an interesting prisoner. And then like the adventure just continues all because he decided to steal some bread. That was a consequence, but it also opened up the, the main story. So as a DM, you can kind of create that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so it seems that that's a good response to kind of the the stealing and pickpocketing and kind of a lot of things there. How would you handle the more extreme measures that we're talking about, like killing different individuals or random things? And how would that make sense in the world? Because like in the thing that I'm talking about without spoilers, it's a it's a module. You know, there's there's certain things that going on, people that could be big figures. And how do you really kind of work that in and maybe try to discourage or do we just run with with the misbehavior, I'll say. So a a very broad way to handle um, that sort of activity, whether it be killing or or stealing or, or pretty much anything that uh, that the players are doing wrong, would be just arresting them and putting them in prison. And it, it's net it's not necessarily. And I say that as broad because you can be arrested for pretty much anything. You can even be arrested arrested for something that you didn't do. And that's kind of a way that like, that's just the best. That's one of the best just consequences for your actions. Like you get caught, you get arrested, you get thrown in prison, and then you can progress the story from there. And there become there, this becomes this entire arc. So for example, the, the entire party gets thrown in prison because one person murdered the wrong, the wrong NPC. That was their consequence. Now to push the for the story forward, maybe they meet a prisoner in that jail cell that has some information about the main story. Maybe the players are hunting a powerful artifact in this dangerous location. And this prisoner is knows the wrong people and says that, Hey, if you help me escape, I'll help you find the back door to this location. That's just like a way to push the story forward. I mean that you could use, you could use that, that scenario for pretty much anything. And you can reflavor that in pretty much any way. So back to the Aladdin example, um, so when I when I gave the Aladdin example, I gave all the examples for if the party is all on board for something. So when Aladdin steals bread, the entire party's like, yes, we're stealing bread because we're hungry. Or when Jasmine leaves, like we're all on the whole party's on board for that. But sometimes the party isn't on board with that, like in the case of um, the monkey, Abu. So when they're in the cave of wonder, Aladdin specifically says, Abu, don't touch anything, but Abu sees that red gem it's like oh i gotta have it 
So he goes against the party's decisions, grabs it. It melts. The entire thing collapses. They lose everything. And then there's like this adventure to try to escape. The NPC that brought them there turns out to be the bad guy, throws them into the pits, and then they find the genie. That in and of itself is being thrown into a prison cell, quote unquote. Now, the prisoner that they meet yeah. might not necessarily be a genie, but it's the, you know, the same concept. And the story can progress forward by by just being thrown into the prison cell, being put in this situation that is their punishment and then finding a way out of it kind of thing. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, being able to just kind of make it into something else if everybody's part of it or have enough punishment to where it matters, but not just ruins it. It's kind of the right. the fine line is what kind of feeling. Yeah. Um, that's just the, one of the, the challenges of a DM is, is like how to push, you know, so actions have consequences. How do we push the story forward with these consequences? Absolutely. And then how do you, uh, along that same kind of roguish behavior, you'll see this happen a lot where players will, um, and I keep using rogues because it's notorious for it, of course, with the, the stereotype, uh, keeping or hiding loot and gold from other players, and it turns it into kind of a combative towards each other among that same kind of behavior. Uh, one one scene they're killing somebody and the other ones are they're almost like trying to justify actions by being that of a chaotic something or a neutral behavior you know so for those things i just don't tolerate it um i when i i don't want the i treat D D very much as a cooperative game and i will always take that out of game if i have to if there is one person mm -hmm. that so so everybody should be working together for a common goal Things are hard enough without with, when everybody's on the same page. Having people going against each other, I, I, I have like a zero tolerance for. If somebody is hiding loot, I like they're going to be like I'm going to go hard against them on that. So a, an example would be like, oh, um, the rogue opens up a chest and the party's not looking, and they just scoop up some of the gold, and pocket it. I'm just going to say the party sees it. Like, like, it's, like I'm just going to say, oh, yeah. you guys see this? That ha like you're not like. I don't care how how reality altering it is. Like maybe they go into another room, grab it, and then come back out with it in their pocket or something. I'm gonna say that like, oh, something's off. Like you see something hanging out of their pocket or something. I'm just I'm never gonna reward. Right. I'm never gonna give somebody something like that that the party doesn't know about. I refuse. I will not reward that behavior. I will always take that out of game. Okay. Um. And, and yeah, then, uh, it won't even be a role. Like if. Rogues, rogues, <laughs> rogues in the <laughs> metaphorical sense, um, will learn very quickly in my game that they can steal from commoners all day long. That's what they're there for. But if they steal from the party, they're never going to get a roll. Like you steal something. Hey, uh, I'm going to slide a hand in this in my pocket so the party doesn't see. Nope, they see it. They see it. They see it from a mile away. <laughs> like they just, you got, you have no shot. You have no shot. Working against the party, I can tell you, you have no shot. Absolutely no makes shot. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So it seems uh, in these two like scenarios, of course, it seems that the best thing to do is if it's something that's like more so against the party, it's something you can discourage, if not just outright say no. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that might it might be roguish or morally questionable, but the other the rest of the party kind of agrees, it's something you should probably try to work in and make it depending that's kind of where you want everything to go. Yes, I very strongly feel that if the entire party is on board with a plan, that I should I will reward them. That that is an experience for me as a DM and that's something that that I like hold on to dearly and I treasure it. Like positive reinforcement 100%. If the entire party is looking in one singular direction and they agree on that direction as a DM, I do not care what that direction is. That is what I'm doing. I, I'm going to always, just like I was just talking about, when the rogue was trying to steal stuff and hide it from the party, D and D, and I said D and D is a cooperative game. Just like how I said D and D is a cooperative game, I'm always going to reward them for doing cooperative things. If one person, like just the other night, I had one player like use a teleport spell so they could bring the enemy in range of their ability, and I gave them an inspiration immediately just because I loved it so much. Cooperative, like the cooperative experience, is something that I hold dear in my game and that will always encourage and, and reward and ever in the best possible way and going against the party is something that i will absolutely like drop drop the hammer down on 
Perfect. So the last thing I have on my notes here is that and amongst what you've said is that as long as every party member is one of them, Ely approves of murder hobos. Absolutely. Yes. I've said that before. I've said that before. Murder hobo is a play style. And if the entire party goes into the tavern and starts killing something, I'm going to like, I'm just going to scratch all my notes, throw them away and then start. <laughs> I'm going to say, OK, give me five minutes. Let me come up with our villain campaign, because that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. We're all villains and we're OK. This is the game that we're running. They're all one on board. They just want to they just want to kill everyone. So, all right. That's the game we're playing. Here we go. Here we go. That, that is exactly what will happen. Perfect. Cool. Well, that answers that. And I hope that was enough to give you some content to lay out and possibly a question for other people to look to. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I, that I want to, I feel like I missed something. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, for the murder example, um, I said that a prison is a, is a solid mm-hmm. option to use for pretty much any, any crimes, but for murder specifically, I want to I want to come up with something for murder specifically. So they they're okay. killing innocent people. What I would do is come up with what those innocent people are doing and how they are contributing to the wor- world, big or small, and then showing what's being taken away, good or bad. Um, okay. So so for example, maybe one of them, one of the innocents that was killed, was running a uh, a shop. A shop right yeah. Now. So that shop is gone now. We don't have that shop anymore. It gets shut down. The goods get shipped somewhere else. And now that shop is just gone. They have to do something else to get there. Um, one of them may have been protecting a portal to another, to the plane, the abyss, and they've just been holding it for years. It's in their family line, but now they're gone and the abyss, a portal to the abyss is now open. It could be as small as losing a shop or as big as that. Anything else? No, that's good for me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Later, bud.